So, um, let's take a look at this one here. So I set them up. I just didn't finish them. So this is the, so the, so letter A, I have to fill in some numbers, but that's the work needed to show. So it's a free response question. That's the work. Calculator can do the rest. Okay. So uh, when rolling two fair die, six-sided die. So fair die means a regular die. It's not loaded or anything. It's the probabilities are all the same. One, six, one, six, one, six for all the sides. Getting a pair of ones, getting a one and a one is called snake eyes. Okay. So the probability of getting snake eyes on any roll is one out of 36. Because there's 36 different things that can happen and a one and a one is one of them. Okay. So suppose that a game at a player, game player rolls the dice 80 times. Okay. X is the number of rolls that result in snake eyes. So find X is two. So that means find, find the probability that out of the 80, they get two. Two of them are snake eyes. Okay. So for equals, we go 80. Combination of 80, choose two. Okay. Um, the probability of success. What is the probability of success? One out of 36, right? So what is that as a decimal? 0. 0.028. Perfect. What's the power that goes with success? Two. two, because there's only two successes. That means 0.972 is going to be um, 78 losses or failures. Okay. So we go, and this is a PDF question since they're only asking for um, two equals two. So we use PDF when it equals something. So we're gonna go to our calculator. We're gonna go to second bars or distribution right on top of it. And then we're gonna go down to where it says binomial PDF. Okay, so the number of trials, there's 80 trials. Probability of success is 0 0.028. Uh, we want two, exactly. Okay, NPK, the first one is N. Pro next one is probability of success, 0 0.028. And then K is the number that we're looking for. Okay. 0.27. Point two seven zero. Okay, so about twenty seven percent chance of that happening. Okay. All right. The next one says fewer than two, right? Fewer than two. Should the player be surprised if fewer than two rolls result in snake eyes? So zero or one. So they roll it eighty times. Roll two die eighty times, and at the end of the eighty. It happened zero times or it happened only one time. That's what we're looking for here, okay? So for this one, we're gonna go binome CDF because I wanna add up zero and one, okay? Remember, it starts with zero and we wanna stop it at one because fewer than two, one is, one is the highest number that's fewer than two, okay? So I'm gonna go binome CDF now. Okay, same number of trials, N, P, same percent success. This one is we're gonna stop at one because we want it to count zero. It's gonna start with zero and go zero, one, two, three, whatever number we put for X, that's where it's gonna stop. So we want it to stop at one. So that's 0.341, uh, yeah. Okay, so should the pay player be surprised if that happens? No, not at all. 34% chance of that happening. It's less than 50, but still, it's still, it's still a relatively high percentage. So the player, no, given the probability, so this is how I would answer it. Given the probability is around 34%, I would not be surprised if it happened. 
over a third of a chance. Okay, so you use the number. So it says calculate appropriate to support your answer. So the so the number supports your answer. Your answer is no. I wouldn't be surprised. Well, why not? If I don't say why, it's just an opinion, right? No, I don't think I'll be surprised. Well, why not? Because it's going to happen about. It would probably happen around thirty four percent of the time. That's a fact. Okay, so be careful. If you don't back it up with anything, it's just an opinion. They don't want opinions. Okay. That's a good question. Yeah. So how small would it be so that I would change my answer? It's pretty subjective. This is what they're looking for. They're looking for, did you base your answer off the number? So for some people, 34% is pretty high. But if you got down to like 10%, 5%, some people might say, hey, that's th there's still a chance there, you know? So yeah, I would I would not be surprised. So they don't care whether you did think they should be surprised, they just care that you backed up your answer using that. There you go. That's all they care about. Okay. Now if it's 34%, uh, they might take off a point if you said, yeah, I'd be surprised because you really understand percents then, right? But if it's like anywhere between, no, no. if it's anywhere, you know, if it's anywhere zero to 10, even 15%, as long as you backed it up with what, as long as you answered the question, there is no magic number. Yeah, there is no magic number. The main thing is backing it up, backing up your answer with, the data with the actual number. So it's not, you're not giving your opinion. That's the main thing. Even when I'm grading them, I'm very liberal on how I grade these because I, um, it's kind of, it's a subjective question. You know, 10% is a lot to some people. It's, it's nothing to a lot of people, to some people. So I, I try to answer it based on, did you reflect back to the number? Okay. Yeah. So there is no magic number, but Use your best judgment. Just make sure you, why are you answering the question the way you are? You should never answer a question in this class. You should never answer a question with just, I think it's that. Why? You always want to back it up. Okay. Even if you're flawed, even if your thinking's flawed, you'll still get credit because you backed it up. Right. So make sure you always do that. Okay. All right. So. Let's take a look at, let's see, do this one now. Try this one. This one's very similar. Very similar to the one you just did. The Australian official lottery. Okay, so I set it up here. So the chances of winning are one in four. Okay, so Mr. Urban is feeling lucky today one day and decides to purchase 100 of the scratch off instant tickets. Find the probability that fewer than 20. So zero, one, two, three, four, all of them up to 19. Okay, so that's a CDF question. So CDF. Okay, so total number of trials, there are 100. Wait, yep, 100 total. Probability of success is 25%, good. And then this one we wanna stop at 19. So N, P, K, N is the total number, 100. Probability of winning is 25%. And the number we want to stop at is 19. So it is uh, pretty much 10%. 0 0.0999. 0 0.09965 or 10%. Okay, there's about a 10% chance of that happening. Letter B says, in fact, Mr. Urban, in fact, Mr. Urban won a prize for only 19, on only 19 of the tickets. So 19 out of the 101. Does this result give evidence, convincing evidence, that the probability of winning is less than one in four? Well, let's see. 
So for 19, it's going to be 100. Combination of 100 where I choose 19. Probability of success, we said earlier, was 25%. So I'm going to have 19 of those that succeed. And I'm going to have what, 81 failures. Okay. So that's a PDF question binomial PDF, because it's only asking for equals 19. It's not asking for less than, greater than. Anytime you see those words, fewer than, more than, less than, greater than symbols, it's going to be a CDF question. Okay. So 100, probability of success is 0.25. Uh, 19 on the dot. Point three six point three seven. Point zero three seven. Okay, so that's my that that's my back that's my evidence. So I got to use my evidence to answer the question now. So does that number? give evidence that the probability is actually less than 25%. That's what that's asking. Does this probability, 0 0.037, give you convincing evidence, make you feel comfortable saying, that, hey, the probability is not one in four. It's actually less than one in four chance of winning. Why not? Exactly, exactly. Exactly what Coldeep said you said, yeah. If the probability of less than 25, it was actually less than 25%, is it 19, 19 out of 100 is 19%. That's less than 25%, right? I would expect that number to be a lot higher. If it was higher, then I could feel comfortable saying it's, um, the probability is actually less than one in four. As I get closer to 25%, so as my number here, so my number is 19 here. As this number gets closer and closer to 25, your probability is going to go up. Probability is going to go up, right? Look at this one here, letter A. I have every number from 0 to 20. That's 21 or 0 to 19. That's 20 numbers. And I added them all up. Added up all their probabilities. And what did that give me? A whopping 10%. There's a 10% chance that you're gonna that, that you're gonna get something less than 20. Right? At 19 specifically, there's about a 4% chance, right? I'm working my way closer to 25. So if I actually did 25, so if this was 25, that would be the highest percent. That's where I would expect the bar to be the highest if I if were a graph. Okay. I would expect 25 to have the highest bar and then all of the others to kind of tail off from there. Okay. So yeah, no, I do not. Does it give me evidence? It's pretty low. For that number, for that, for it to be less than one in four, that would have to be a lot higher. And this number, not so even much. This number more. That no, the point zero nine nine five. That actually is better evidence because this is zero one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven all the way to nineteen. Add them all together. This one is just nineteen. Okay, so next one. Okay, so now we're gonna get into different types of questions. They're gonna ask be asking us for mean, standard deviation, shape, all that fun stuff. All right, so here 
Softball player is traditionally a 32% hitter. That means 32% of the time they get a hit. Okay? Pretty good. Um, in a season, she takes 427 at-bats. So that means 427 times she gets to hit. About 32% of the time she gets on base because of a hit. Okay? Find the mean and standard deviation. Well, before we can do this, we have to determine if it's binomial. Okay, because we can't use all of these formulas over here unless it's binomial distribution. So how do we verify that it's binomial distribution? There you go. Bins. Big four. These are the four that have to, for this question, have to be yes. Okay, so binary. Are there only two choices? What is success going to be on this question? Whether she gets on base or whether she doesn't, right? She gets a hit or doesn't get on. She gets on base or she doesn't get on base. Okay. Um, because if she walks, it's actually not an official at bat. So let's say, you know, like, because in softball, just like baseball, you can walk, right? If you get four, four balls, you walk, right? Those are actually not considered official at bats. So it doesn't affect their average. So, um, so the only thing that affects her average is if she gets a hit or she doesn't get a hit. She gets an out, strikes out, something like that, okay? So success is gets on base because of a hit. Failure is anything else, okay? All right, independent. So knowing the results, well, I always like to do the, I, I, I like to do independent last because independence goes with this one down here. So first of all, let's go to the number. Fixed number of trials. Are there a fixed number of trials in this case? 427, yep. Success. Success is always gonna be the same percent for each, 20, 32%. She's a 32% hitter. So because of that, it is independent. Okay. All right, so now let's go back to the question. So now that we verified it is binomial, we can use our formulas now. So we have a mean and we have a standard deviation formula. Okay, so for those of you guys in here, you guys can see it on the board. It's in your notes too. And it's on your formula sheet as well. Right there, and then standard deviations right there. Okay, so these are given to you on the test. You don't have to memorize. All right, so the mean is N times P. What is N? The number of trials, and we said that's 427 times P. What is P? Success, 32% success, right? So it's also known as the expected value. What would I expect her? How many hits would I expect her to get? What is it? 427? 136.1. 136.1. So around 136, 137 hits. Okay. Don't round your answer. Leave your answer like that. But if I was going to put it in a set, if I'm interpreting it, if I sometimes I'll have you interpret it. If you're going to interpret it, then in play, then in words, you can say, I would expect her to get about 136, 137 hits. Okay, but when you're calculating it, don't don't round. Okay. That's that. Standard deviation now. Standard deviation is N times P times one minus P, and then I root it, square root it. So again, N is 427, P is 32.32, 1 minus 0.32 is failure. It's going to be 68%. So it's 427 times 0.32 times 0.68, and then I find the square root. Let's 
0.427 times 0.32 times 0.68 square root. I get about, yeah, I get 9.639. Okay. So I would expect her to get about 136, 137 hits in a season. Give or take, that number will vary by about nine or 10 hits. So she could get 10 hits more, she could get 10 hits less. And it would still be, still would be, I would, that's what I expect. Okay. Okay. So now what's the probability she gets at least 200? So what does at least mean? Which one of those symbols over there in blue is at least? Greater than or equal to. Greater than or equal to. So what I got to figure out is starting at 200 and then going to 201. Oops. Dot, dot, dot. Finishing up with 427, because that's as much, that's how many hits as she gets. Find the probability of each, add them all up. Okay. So yeah, you could do it by hand, but it'll take you a while. All right. So let's use the calculator. So this is a CDF question because it's not equals. It's greater than or equals. Okay. So if I go to my calculator. Okay, so if I'm doing CDF, there's 427 trials, right? Probability of success is 32%. Mm -hmm. What is my X number here? 100, 199. 199. That's where I, I, was, I thought it was. Yeah, I know, but. I thought it was greater than or equal to. Yeah, but if it's but 200, that means the number will be equal to 201. So we want to count 200. Yeah, so. So. If we want to count 200, don't we stop at 200? No, we stop at 199. Remember, we're subtracting it. Yeah, by one. Yeah. So, so. Remember, CDF goes from zero. So it starts zero, one, two, three, four, five. And where do I want it to stop? 199. 199 is where I want it to stop. 200 is us. Is what we want. Because of what we want. Yeah. It's still the same number. <laughs> yes. In the end, in the end, you're going to get the same. It's the same yeah. Okay. Yep. Darn near one, right? So, my question is: Is that my answer? No. no. I mean, I don't know what the regular answer out One e to the negative ten. Oh gosh. So that's pretty much one hundred percent. So is my answer pretty much one hundred percent? No. No. What's my answer? Pretty much zero. Uh, pretty much zero. Very unlikely. Extremely unlikely. Yeah. Not really. So this is what you can do. This is what, how you write. This is how you write it when you're calculating something like this. You can write it like this, or, or you can say you can use the wavy oh. and say zero. You don't want to say equal zero because it doesn't equal zero, but it's approximately like it's, it's approximately zero. So you can say you can use the wavies and say zero. That means approximately. It's pretty much zero. There's pretty much a 0% chance that she's going to get 200 or more hits in this season. Yeah, there's pretty much a 0% chance. Or you can say, or you could just round and say 0 0.0001 because, you know. 
that's pretty much zero. Either one's okay. Yep. Does that make sense though? Does that make sense that the probability would be so low? Yeah. Yeah. How come? Yeah, right. I would expect that this is the number I expect her to get. This is what I would expect her to get right here, 136, around 136, 137. 200 or more is a lot higher, right? Like Josh said, it's closer to 50%, right? So you're talking, you know, almost double the amount of hits when she's only a 32% hitter. It's a very low chance of happening. Pretty much zero chance of happening. Okay. If it does happen in real life, that means she's not a 32% hitter. She's better than that. She's better than that. She was have she was having an off year. Okay. It's her old account. Yeah, something happened. Something happened. It was an outlier year or something. Roy Roy made her miss. It was so look, she was so jacked that when she moved her arm, the ball, right, space with the shoulder around the ball. Space with the ball and the ball. <laughs> okay, so Anyways. do this one now. So it says calculate and interpret. Calculate means number, interpret means words. So I need number and words for this one. So 14 and 2.646, but we have to use words. So how would I, how would I use words to describe 14? On average, there will be 14 hits. There you go. Or I would expect 14 heads after each pile. After the after all after uh, well, when all said and done, or after after the 28 students are done, I would expect 14 heads. Something like that. Okay. So you know, let's see. I would expect 14 heads after all 28 students flip their coins. And then the last one, 2.646. How do I interpret 2.646? After each trial, the actual number of heads will vary from the mix by about two or three. There you go. So you're going to say, you're going to use the words vary. And what does it vary from? 14. The mean, which is 14. Okay. The number of heads. Will vary by 2.646 um, will vary from the mean, I should say. Will vary from the mean by 2.646. We have to use the X one. The what? Yeah, your interpretation is fine. Yeah. Yeah. You could say, yeah, if in the year interpretation, you could say about three, about two or three. That's fine. As long as you have that, as long as you've calculated the number correctly, then in your interpretation, you can um, put it into more logical terms because, yeah, there's no. If you're gonna flip a coin, it's either gonna be heads or tails. It's not gonna be 0.4646 or it's 646. Okay. Okay, so one last thing, one last thing. So um, so these are the, uh, we talked about the calculator commands, um, binome PDF, binome CDF. Those are the calculator commands there. And then I put them earlier here. I, I added them yesterday. So it depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for exactly one particular number of successes, that's equals, that's PDF. You're gonna choose binome PDF, right? All of these are located 
Does it say where they're located? Remember, second. So you're going to hit second vars for distribution. Okay. At most means less than or equal to. Fewer than means less than. More than means greater than. And at least, we just said that one, at least is greater than or equal to. Okay. So if it's greater than or equal to, you're going to need to subtract from one. So anything greater than, anything at mo, anything that's uh, more than, greater than, at least, you're going to have to subtract from one. Less than, at most, fewer than, you don't have to. Okay. Anything that starts from zero and gets bigger, you don't have to subtract. But anything that doesn't start with zero, you do. You uh, you do. Okay. Um, so one other thing, well, I, well, since we're done with this a little early, if um, so, when we're calculating, when we're doing some of these calculations, right? This part here, like this part, you can do on a regular calculator, right? 0.55 to the seventh power. This you can do on a regular calculator. This part right here is combinations. Combinations you can just Google combinations. So, for example, I'll show you. It's this easy. So if you don't have a calculator and you're doing this at home and you need to use that formula, you just literally go combinations calculator, combination calculator, and there are apps here that will give you that number. Once this, oh, there we go. So combinations calculator, it'll give you that number. That's the formula over there, but you don't need to use that formula. Because if you're in class, you can use one of the one of ours calculators, but if you're at home and you don't have a calculator, um, no. No, because I have uh, calculus uses them too. And they want to borrow one too. So I don't have enough for all you guys and um, calculus. So N is the total number. R is the number you're looking for. So like, for example, this one is 12 to 7. And you can say calculate, and it'll give you the number that you're looking for. I don't know why this is going super slow. It's weird. I already have the answer, but I'm not able to. Not, there we go. 792. So you multiply that number times so that would be 792 would be what this equals and then you multiply this and then you multiply this multiply all three of them together and you will get this answer here okay all right